Hi everybody, this is Adam Ellenboss from Nightlight Astrology. It is Saturday, September 21st, and I'm just doing a quick check-in on uh, this evening's last quarter moon, which you'll be experiencing both tonight and tomorrow. Let's just take a look at this, because I was looking at it this morning, and I was like, you know what, this is probably worth doing a video about. I'm in California right now, and I am uh, here just for the weekend celebrating the um, birthday of my spiritual teacher. And um, that's something in the bhakti yoga tradition that's um, kind of like a, a festival community event. And um, there's many different spiritual teachers, of course. And the way that we celebrate a spiritual teacher, someone who's like a, an advanced sort of monk, um, they've lived a long, many, like many years in a kind of um, very serious um, mode of practicing bhakti yoga. So we celebrate them and their role in our life as our, as our teacher when, when it's their birthday. Um, but also it's occasion to remember and celebrate the entire chain of teachers that have come before and the, the way that the guru shows up in, in many ways in our, in our lives. So it's really been uh, nice to do that. I'm, I'm blessed with the opportunity to travel a little bit more than some people get to uh, simply because, um, you know, I can work on the road. So at any rate, all that being said, I was looking at the astrology this morning and I was like, oh, it's interesting. Look at this last quarter moon, uh, which I had looked at earlier in the month when I did my monthly forecast, but it had kind of slipped, slipped under my radar a bit. Um, so the reason that this is such a compelling last quarter moon is because the sun and the moon making the last quarter square, the moon in Gemini, the sun in Virgo, they are both in Mercury's sign. One is Mercury's masculine sign, the other is Mercury's feminine sign, both places of Mercury. Mercury is actually also exalted in Virgo. And that normally wouldn't be a huge deal, like that's going to happen, you know, once a year. Uh, you're going to get that combination during a moon cycle. Um, but the other thing that's interesting to note is what's happening to Mercury at the exact same time, which is that Mercury is in an engagement. An engagement happens within three degrees, means game on. And it is in an engagement with Saturn. So... Mercury and Saturn are getting into a square with one another right as the moon squares the sun. So what does that mean for us, right? Well, first of all, the last quarter moon moment is a moment of letting go of something. It's a moment of having to discern what's useful, what's not useful, what's true, what's not true, what has been true, maybe is no longer true. Um, it's a moment of letting go and preparing for the start of a new cycle. So there's this deep sense of release. And um, also, because this is such a Mercury-ruled moment, and because Mercury is square to Saturn, the sense of needing to see things very objectively is in the air right now. Needing to see things objectively and, and make a decision, basically, um, that comes from you know healthy, clear, mature, sober, rational, maybe even a little critical thinking, um, to communicate our no's and our boundaries very clearly right now, to make decisions based on a clear analytical space that we're in. I can see things clearly. I can see this is this and this is not that. This is kind of a um, moment for mental or intellectual um, doubts to be addressed. Um, Mercury square Saturn can be about the doubting mind. It can be about the mind that wants to control things. It can be about the mind that tends to be negative about things. It can be about trying to communicate or articulate some degree of mature, objective, clear thinking to articulate something that is sober, objective, honest, and like, like sort of not scientific, but, um, potentially just lucid and not uh, not inebriated with some kind of false positivity, right? That's the moment that's at hand right now. That energy can be used, you could say. First of all, I, okay, I'm not going to go into that. It's a long story. But, but basically, when people say this is an energy that can be used, it's not really an energy that can be used. It's not really the best way of thinking about it. I mean, you can think about it that way. But the planets aren't really energies. The, the planets are the planets are signifying like the flow of time and karma, which is 
very complex and it's not something the planets alone are in charge of. They're just like indicators of the karmic clock. It's a simple way of thinking about it. But when they're like, when they're, when Mercury is engaging with Saturn at the time of the last quarter moon, the karmic season right now is such that you could, you could, you could sort of use this moment to be sober, rational, serious, clear headed, objective, etc. cetera. Um, especially if the goal is to separate what's true from what's false, to communicate something, um, to have an, an insight or an idea translate into practical actions or strategy or uh, structures of organization. Um, it's a moment of commitment uh, based on clear thinking. I, I'm going to do this because I realize it's true. I'm not going to do something because I realize it's not true. This just this kind of like ability to to be very mature in making decisions right now in general is pronounced. But also Mercury and Saturn imply a moment of great learning, a great moment of education. Um, there's the opportunity for um, almost like taking a skill or an ability that you have and turning it into something more tangible, crystallizing something intellectually. So um, the other thing that you could see going on right now, because again, last quarter moon sometimes has to go with letting go of things, letting go of doubts, letting go of fears, coming to see where you've been overly rigid in your thinking. These are also potentially gifts of the astrological moment. So I wanted to mention some of those so that you can think about uh, that as you're processing the last quarter moon, both today and tomorrow. Now, I want to share a chart with you guys that I think is also really cool. And that is, let's see, I can pull it up. So this is this little horary that I did um, that I had recently that I, I think is so cool. It's, it's this very simple one. It's not one on like, I think I may have shown you guys one of these before, but in this horror area, the question was, will the cat come back? <laughs> so uh, this is a horary chart. It was a, a predictive technique that ancient astrologers use, especially Arabic, Persian, Indian astrologers, um, but also Hellenistic astrologers. So at any rate, we first of all, we want to locate, uh, this is a, a person that's asking about their neighbors, because this is a guy who's friends with his neighbors, and he's wondering if his neighbor's cat is going to come home to them or not. So first of all, we need to identify the neighbors. The neighbors are ruled by the third house. The ruler of the third house is the sun, so the sun represents the neighbors. The sixth house from the third house, using what we call derived houses, comes to represent a small animal, as the sixth house is the place of small animals. So smaller than a sheep. So sixth house from the third would be the neighbor's small animal or small pet, which is ruled by Saturn. So Saturn comes to represent the cat. Now, what we're asking is, will there be a reunion between the neighbors and their cat? And what do we see? We see the neighbors as the sun at 1322 Virgo, and Saturn as the cat at 1401 Capricorn, and Saturn is retrograde. It wouldn't really matter in this case because the sun is swifter and would pick up the trine to Saturn anyway, but isn't that fantastic? Yeah, Saturn, the cat, is going backward toward the sun, which is the neighbors or the people who's who are missing the cat. So in this case, the answer is, yeah, the cat will come home. And in fact, that's what happened. The a neighbor, actually, a neighbor of uh, a neighbor of the neighbors, another neighbor, uh, found the cat and brought the cat home. So a simple little horary that I thought I would share with you guys, which is pretty neat. Now, why am I sharing that? I like to share charts prior to the start of one of my new courses. Um, I have a new course that's coming up. It's starting on November sixteenth. It's called Ancient Astrology for the Modern Mystic. And the course is um, basically for anyone who's studied a lot of modern astrology but has never gone back to study the roots 
of ancient Greco-Roman astrology, very similar to ancient Indian astrology. Um, the reason that it's a good it's a, it's a good idea to go back and study our roots is that while modern astrology is really good in helping us evaluate our psychology, our behavior, um, our self-concept, uh, ancient astrology is more of a karmic science. It's more about using specific predictive methods and techniques, not unlike being able to locate people's animals or, you know, locate you know, locate missing objects, or sometimes answer very specific questions like how long does my ailing father have left to live or um, will I get the promotion that I'm hoping for this year? Astrology at its roots is a deeply predictive art form and it's also a study of destiny and fate in so far as we're each born here in this lifetime with the perpetual consequences of previous choices that we're here to experience. Previous actions that we've made with our free will that are now constellating in this lifetime through the birth chart in terms of a, a fate or a, a karmic field where certain things are bound to happen and awareness of those things helps us to navigate through them. So ancient astrology has a bit more of the predictive element going for it. It's more of a karmic science. When you pair that and learn how to really work the, the best methods and philosophies of that system alongside of some of the beautiful and deeper psychological sophistication, let's say, of modern astrology, you're just a better rounded and more well-equipped uh, astrologer, in my, my humble opinion. Certainly, that's how it's been for me. So two people can take my course. People who are total beginners who want to start from square one and are interested in astrology but really don't know where to start and need some structured guidance to go, go into astrology with. Uh, the second kind of person is someone who's really into astrology, but feels like they're swimming through a lot of information and would like to get really grounded and structured and start from the ancient roots and work your way up and compare and contrast the differences between ancient uh, methods and modern methods and practices. As you go, the benefit is that you will still be learning a lot of brand new things, whether you're someone who's been studying for a while or you're brand new. So it's a really cool course for that reason. I love teaching this class because I really want more people to know about traditional astrology because it's very different from modern astrology and a healthier, deeper appreciation of our history and heritage as mystics, as practitioners of this beautiful uh, language it can do nothing but help us. So I'm very passionate about trying to educate people about Hellenistic ancient astrology, um, as well as things like horary and medieval astrology and other forms of astrology that come prior to the kind of personality focus of modern astrology. So at any rate, all that being said, there's also two kinds of students to take my program. Uh, and the, the first of, of this, uh, this kind of other category of, of motivation, why, why take an astrology program? There's two good reasons to take an astrology program. One is because you love astrology and you want to practice it for others, which a lot of people take my course for. I've um, seen hundreds of students come through my course in 10 years of doing this course. And it's the course has obviously evolved and changed over time. But a lot of students have gone through and a lot of people with the intention of wanting to practice for others feel very well equipped after uh, going through my, my program. And in the next few weeks, I'll be interviewing a few of my former students so that you can kind of get more of the, uh, the vibe of the, what their experience was like in the classroom. Uh, the other kind of person, so it's good if you want to practice astrology for others. It'll give you the foundation, the confidence, and a lot of practical experience actually working with clients because you'll see me work with clients in the classroom uh, for a good portion of the program, implementing the techniques that we study together over the course of a full year. Uh, there's 30 classes. There's 12 guest lecturers outside of those 30 classes. It's a really deep and very thorough um, uh, and well-structured program. So it, it's not something that you, it's not like you wouldn't want to take it if you're not ready for kind of really diving into your interest in astrology. However, um, it's not closed down. It's not a class that's closed down to people who have a totally different motivation than wanting to be a professional astrologer. I would actually say the majority of students who take my program 
fit this second category, which is astrology speaks to me. It calls to me. I'm fascinated by it. I want to know more about it. This is almost more important that this be the foundation of your calling, even if you want to be a professional. Because the, the thing is, is that astrology, prior to being any kind of, you know, prognosticating, a prognosticative tool, uh, is actually a spiritual practice. It's like meditation, and it's like, it's, or it's like yoga, um, in, in the sense that, or even like prayer, in the sense that what astrology is doing is teaching you how to perceive the flow of events in time differently. And when you per learn how to perceive them through the language of astrology, you learn how to move through the events of destiny and navigate the landscape of karma, first and foremost for yourself, um, with much greater awareness and a, a heightened state of consciousness. It is like I like to say that astrology is like a, a form of um, it's like a form of intellectual yoga in the sense that it's teaching you a language, almost like a linguistic yoga, where it's it's teaching you a language that helps you find the prayer position throughout all of the different flowing events, which at, at, the more you do this, you also gain flexibility and intelligence in terms of your relationship with these flowing events in time, these different karmic seasons. So it's really good. Like most of the people who take my program come from that space. They're not necessarily sure if they're going to practice for others or not. They might, but this is very healthy. Would you say, oh, I can't go to a yoga class and learn about yoga uh, unless I plan to be a teacher? No, right? Not at all. Learning astrology is not about doing it for others. Learning astrology, first and foremost, is a spiritual practice. Then maybe, for in some people, it becomes very quick. quickly. You feel called to share the language with others as a reader. Both elements of this program is mostly about how to make it a spiritual part of your life. But there's also, uh, you know, about 10 sessions where you see me working with clients and then we workshop and break down those sessions so that we can talk about how this actually works practically. Okay, so if you're interested, check out uh, nightlightastrology.com. You can go to the courses page. The early bird discount is in effect. Um, class is starting to fill up. Early bird discount is um, $12.99 if you pay in full. There's $1,800 if you need a 12-month payment plan. And if you are experiencing serious financial hardship, there are need-based tuition options. Those are also limited. Um, so you, and there's a, a list of things that you need to, um, considerations that you need to have if, if you're to qualify for that. Like you have to be like a single parent or a full-time student or unemployed or receiving disability. Or There's kind of a list. So you can check over that. Uh, I always try to make the class really accessible for people and you have a range of options to choose from. Um, like I said, class is starting to fill up. Uh, so take a look at that if you're interested, and I hope to see some of you in class soon, and I hope you have a, a great last quarter moon this weekend. Okay, take care.